A pretty damning analysis on Zone 2 exercise training was just published, and it concluded that the current evidence does not support Zone 2 training as the optimal intensity for improving mitochondrial or fatty acid oxidative capacity. Yet Zone 2 training has been discussed at length by voices like Dr. Peter Atia as a sweet spot that gives us some of the strongest benefits from exercise. So should you and I incorporate Zone 2 exercise into our training protocol, or should we prioritize other forms of exercise? Let's take a look. Zones in exercise, they're a way to describe intensity, and technically, zone to exercise is often defined as the level of exercise that we can sustain while keeping our lactate levels below 2 millimoles per litre. But practically, most of us use the torque test, so we're aiming for a level of intensity where we're still working out, but we're able to maintain a conversation comfortably. So what's so special about zone 2? Well, according to its proponents, it's the zone where we can get the greatest benefits in two areas, so that's mitochondrial capacity and fatty acid oxidative capacity. But authors of this new analysis, they raise some worries. So proponents of Zone 2 training, they'll often point to training habits of elite athletes, but most of us realistically aren't elite athletes. So what's best for us? Well, the authors assemble a lot of research to show that both of the claimed benefits of Zone 2 training are quite suspect when it comes to the average person. When it comes to mitochondrial health, intensity around Zone 2, it didn't seem to improve mitochondrial function for non-endurance trained individuals. And the authors conclude that the existing evidence tends to point for intensities above Zone 2 as being the most helpful in stimulating mitochondrial changes for non-elite athletes. For fatty acid oxidation, we've got limited data and conflicting results, so at the moment it is isn't clear which exercise intensity is best for improving fat oxidation, but doesn't look like we can say that zone 2 is superior. So where does this leave us? Well, it looks like the impact of high intensity exercise in general is more pronounced, and if our time is limited, there's a danger that zone 2 training can crowd out other high intensity training. So for most of us, we're better off focusing on higher intensities and add in zone 2 if we've got additional time, and obviously make sure that if you're doing high intensity exercise, do it safely.